What is up everybody, Roddy here. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Today I have a very quick but important video for you and we're going to explore how to set up ESLint for a Node.js project using the VS Code extension and a few simple commands. So you might be wondering what is ESLint? ESLint is basically a static code analysis tool for identifying problematic patterns found in JavaScript code. Here are some reasons why you should consider using ESLint. So let's start by finding errors, typos, um, syntax errors. Um, it helps you follow best coding practices, uh, code style consistency. Technically, it can help you avoid uh, committing bad code and it can warn you when using harmful and deprecated methods. And a very simple example of bad code could be using console log for debugging. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. So now you might be wondering, well, why Airbnb? And the answer is actually fairly simple. It's basically they have the best documentation. You can see what is considered as good practices and what is considered as bad practice. If you people are new to this channel, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Consider liking this video. It truly helps the channel and I cannot thank you enough. Now let's jump on the computer and get started. Welcome everybody and let's get started. First of all, I wanted to mention that I will be using the project that we did in the last video for this one, just because we have a lot of code that we can lint and see if we have any problems. Now, before we get started, make sure that you have the ESLint extension installed in Visual Studio Code and you can go under here, extensions, find ESLint, search for it. And the one that I have is this one, with the orange logo, uh, which is created by Dirk Bumer, and he has a lot of downloads and a lot of stars. So make sure you install this, and once you do, then let's do the setup. And I already have PowerShell open in here, which I have CD to my project, and I'm ready to install ESLint. Now for this video, I'm actually going to be following the installation guide uh, by ESLint, the official one, which you can check out on their website, uh, eslink.org, and then you can go under user guide and then getting started. So first of all, we need to install eslint as a development dependency. And to do this, we can do npm install eslint dash dash save dash dev. And this should take a couple of seconds. And now that we have ESLint installed, we need to set up the configuration file, which is very easy to do. And to do this, we can do mpx eslint dash dash init. And this will initialize the configuration file for us. And it's going to ask us a couple of questions. Now, as you can see here, we can just check for syntax only. We can check for syntax and find problems. And we can check for syntax, find problems and enforce uh, code style. So this is the one that we want to do. So press enter on the last one. Then we are using common.js inside here. So let's press common.js and we're not using either React or Vue. So none of these is the correct answer in here. And then does your project use TypeScript? No, we are only using pure JavaScript in here. Then it's going to ask us, where does your code run? And in all case, we're using Node, so let's select Node. And the next one is going to ask us if you like to use a popular style guide. And yes, this is what we want to do. So let's use a popular style guide. And as you can see here, we have three options. We have Airbnb, we have the standard one, and we have the Google. So in this case, let's use the Airbnb and let's press enter and then let's press JavaScript on here and we should be good to go. So would you like to install them now with NPM? And we just need to press yes. And then this should take a couple of seconds to install. Now that we have ESLint configured, uh, I can minimize this. And as you can see inside here, 
we have this eslint uh, file. Technically speaking, if I open any of my codes, for example, app.js, hopefully it should take a second and this should start linting my code. And as you can see, eslint has now underlined uh, every single line that uh, there is a problem. And basically we now need to follow the Airbnb style guide, uh, which I will post in the description below. And if you go to the GitHub page, you will see a lot of examples, uh, for example, why you shouldn't be doing things. And uh, you will see, for example, bad practice and good practice and so on. So, so this is pretty useful, actually. Uh, you can uh, have a look at it in your own time. But um, what I wanted to say is that if you wish to actually change them, um, if you wish to change some stuff, you can always do this. Uh, you can apply your own rules. If you were to go to the ESLint website, we can go to user guide and under rules, you can see plenty of rules. For example, uh, this one here, no console. So if you click on this, so a good example for Airbnb style guide would be that uh, console log should be avoided, but if you don't want console log to be underlined every single time for some reason, you can always uh, specify your own rules. And uh, yeah, just have a look at some of the rules. For example, no empty. Um, and they show you good, correct examples in here and so on. And basically you can change all the rules. Now, now we can pretty much end the video here, but I wanted to show you how we can actually solve some of the problems so in my code, for example, in app.js, as you can see, pretty much everything is underlined. And the main problem in this document is that I don't have semicolons anywhere. And this is purely just because I prefer it that way. But uh, obviously we're using the Airbnb style guide and they're using columns. So technically speaking, we should go and fix all those problems. So potentially we just need to go around and put in columns just like this semicolons just like this and then we can inspect some of the other errors in a second okay i've added semicolons on pretty much every single line that i can see but as you can see we're still getting this uh, line problem here and easy fix for this would be to go to the eslint rc.js file and set up our own little row in here so what we can do is let's bring this into one line and we can do line break style and make sure that we set this to zero like this and save. If we go back to the app.js, as you can see, this has solved all of the line problems. And the next thing that I'm spotting here is that we have all those static files uh, underlined. And if you hover over, you will see that they prefer us to use path.join or path.resolve. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So first of all, we actually need to require path. So we have to do const path equals require. And then we need to require path just like this. And as you can see now, we have another online here. And this is because we've declared this uh, const, but we haven't used it yet. And now to fix this, we need to do path.join and then wrap everything in brackets like this. And then instead of a plus sign, we need to remove this and put comma and just fix the space in here and we should be good to go. So for the next two, we need to do exactly the same thing. So technically speaking, I can just copy this and try to remember the last two things. So we have images and we have JS so IMG and JS. And as you can see, we are almost good to go in here if I save this, but we are getting another error inside here. And if we inspect this, you will see that they're expecting an empty line. So let's do that quickly and problem solved. So sometimes you're just gonna have to Google some of the problems that you get. And the last problem that I see inside here is the console log. Maybe you can require the node debug instead, um, instead of console log, or you can always add your own rule inside here, inside the ESLint file. 
So for this one, I believe that the rule will be if we put this on another line with a comma like this, I believe that the rule will be no dash console and set this to zero with a comma, remove some of the lines just like this, save this and let's have a look. As you can see now the error is gone. And the last thing that I've noticed here is that for some reason it's screaming that a uh, new line required at the end of the file but not found. So we can simply press enter and this will create a new line for us. So now that you see how ESLint works, it's basically trying to help you find any errors. Uh, you're following best practices technically, you get the code consistency and you're basically avoiding to commit bad code. And the last thing I wanted to mention for this is that you might sometimes get indentation problems. You can change the number of spaces that you can use. Uh, for example, at the moment mine is set to two, but you can always click on spaces here, indent using spaces and select the spaces that you want. For example, I think by default it's set to four. The Airbnb style guide might not like this, so you can always change that. And also you can configure the extension called Prettier to help you out with these uh, kind of things, but, but I didn't want to waste any more time. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this video. I hope that you found it useful. Uh, don't forget to smash the like, subscribe to my channel and comment below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.